In this video, we're going to prove by induction that the nth derivative of e to the x sine x is equal to 2 to the n over 2 e to the x sine of x plus a quarter n pi. Now, in order to do this proof by induction, you need to be well versed in differentiation uh, using the product rule and also the trigonometry section um, with uh, the r sine theta plus alpha, so equivalent forms from uh, A-level maths. If you don't have um, understanding of those, then there are going to be parts of this that you're really not going to grasp. Okay, So it's really to do once you have that knowledge. OK, so uh, step one then. Uh, we prove true for n equals 1. OK, so we need to differentiate with respect to x, e to the x sine x. OK, so we'd use the product rule to do that. So we've got e to the x times the derivative of sine x plus sine x times the derivative of e to the x. OK, so here we've got e to the x times uh, this cosine x plus sine x. Now, to get this into the format that I want, I'm going to need to use the r sine theta plus alpha uh, concept here. So, uh, the idea is that I want to write cosine x plus sine x in the form of r sine theta plus alpha. Okay? or sine x plus alpha, rather. So I want to find the r and the alpha to do that. So utilising the compound angle formula for sine, we have sine x cosine alpha plus cosine x sine alpha. So r cosine alpha sine x plus r sine alpha cosine x. So whatever's in front of the cosine must be the same. So we've got r sine alpha must be equal to 1. And whatever's in front of the sine x must be the same. So r cos alpha must be equal to 1. So sine alpha is 1 over r. And cosine alpha is 1 over r. So if I drew a right angle triangle for this, there's my alpha, there's my r, uh, the opposite is 1, the adjacent is 1, so that means that r is root 2, and because it's an isosceles right angle triangle, alpha will have to be 45 degrees or pi over 4. OK, so we can rewrite this as uh, e to the x times by root 2 sine of x plus pi over 4. OK. So I can write that as 2 to the power of 1 half e to the x sine of x plus 1 quarter times 1 times pi. And so it is true for n equals 1. OK, so step 2. We assume true for n equals k. So that means that the derivative, the kth derivative of e to the x sine x will be 2 to the power of k over 2 e to the x sine of x plus 1 quarter k pi. OK. Step 3, we need to prove that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So we want to find the k plus 1th derivative of e to the x sine x. Now, the k plus 1th derivative 
is the derivative of the kth derivative. So this is the derivative of, um, well, let's write it as d k of d x k e to the x sine x. So we want the derivative of this. So 2 to the k over 2 e to the x sine of x plus a quarter k pi. Now remember here, k is a constant. Okay, It's not a variable, so I can treat it just like any old number. So what have we got? This 2 to the k over 2 times e to the x. Okay, now that's going to multiply with the derivative of sine of x plus a quarter k pi using the product rule. So the derivative of the inside is just 1, so this is cosine x plus 1 quarter k pi plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now the derivative of the first is just 2 to the k over 2 um, e to the x, and so we've got sine x plus 1 quarter k pi. Right, let's tidy that up. So we're going to factor out the 2 to the k over 2 and the e to the x and have in the bracket cosine of x plus 1 quarter k pi plus sine of x plus 1 quarter k pi. Right, OK, so the next job is to say, right, well, I want to write that in a similar form, the r sine x plus alpha. Of course, the x here is a quarter k pi. Uh, sorry, an x plus a quarter k pi. The alpha is still going to be the pi over 4 because this is still in the same format, right? This angle here, whatever I've got in the bracket here, is the same as what I've got in the bracket there. I would break it apart in exactly the same way, just replacing all of the x's with x plus a quarter k pi. It's exactly the same working. So actually, this is equal to 2 to the k over 2 e to the x times by root 2 sine of x, which is the x plus a quarter k pi, plus alpha, which is pi over 4. OK. Now, that's 2 to the half. So this is 2 to the k over 2 plus a half, OK, using my addition of indices here. e to the x sine of x plus... Now, thinking about what I, how I want to kind of get this, I want the quarter, they both got a quarter and they both got pi, so if I can factor out that, so quarter, and we'd have k plus 1 pi. So it's in the correct format, right? Replacing the n with the k plus 1. Over here, we've got k over 2 plus a half, which is the same as k plus 1 over 2. And that is exactly what we would expect if we replaced each of the ends in here with k plus 1. OK? And so, if it is true for this, then we've shown that it is true for the k plus 1th term. So, we are done. We just need our concluding statement now. So, as true for n equals 1, and if true for n equals k, then we've shown uh, that it's true for n equals k plus 1. So it is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. OK? So this one was a little, this is a bit heavy duty, this problem, um, but it's a mix of using product rule, uh, the equivalent forms and proof by induction.